Bare vzi sar gili bare kam nerspir ki zai ne hrosta handesa dar cel zesete. Ai sor dar cel uzumen kandra darnal. Smit Sonia ier cu azar tasna ut garna na in festivalin. Vor ner kaiat snumer Catalonia ei ev Hayastani azga in mesha kuitnera. My name is Gloria Sanders. I'm here with the Voice of Armenians TV New York, and we are here in Washington D.C. at the Smithsonian Folk Life Festival. It is their annual festival, and this year. They are focusing on Armenia and showcasing Armenian heritage and culture. Thousands have gathered here on the National Mall between the Capitol and the Washington Monument to taste Armenian food, listen to Armenian music, and get a little bit of Armenian culture. Let's take a look. Last Wednesday, Armenia and Catalonia took center stage at the 2018 Smithsonian Folklife Festival in Washington, D.C., which runs from June 27th to July 8th on the National Mall. The festival features over 170 participants from Armenia and the Armenian diaspora, including artisans, designers, musicians, cooks, winemakers, and performers. The president of Armenia, Armen Sarkisyan, and representatives from the government of Armenia, U.S. Department of State, USAID, and Armenian American diaspora organizations were in attendance at the opening ceremony on June 28th. During the 10-day event that annually draws millions of visitors on site and online from across the United States and around the world, the Smithsonian and Armenian partners are presenting Armenia Creating Home. Visitors can learn how to cook lavash flatbread in a clay oven, known as a tonid, make cheese pies, bake gata, and grill chorovats. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, um, and we're having such an awesome time here at the Folklife Festival. This music is so great. Um, everyone's really just like enjoying um, the vibes. It's really relaxing, um, really nice to 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 see everyone here. This is a really cool community event and um, it's great to have the band here. It, it's a nice day, it is hot, but there's people relaxing in the shade, listening to some excellent music. Um, the entertainment is great and it's really great to um, learn about everything the Folklife Festival has to offer. The music creates a great free-flowing vibe. Um, yeah, we're having an awesome afternoon. The four of us just got here a little while ago um, and we sat down to enjoy the music for a little and take a break in the shade, but we're going to start wandering around and going to some of the workshops and tasting some of the food soon. Along with tasting wine, observing, and trying their hand at baking, dancing, weaving, and carving, visitors can also virtually explore two of Armenia's most prominent historical sites. The Areni One Cave, which is known for the oldest 6,100-year-old winery and the first ever found leather shoe, as well as the 13th century Noravank Monastery. My name is Havard Bauer. I'm an American. I went to Armenia for the first time in 1998 when I was 53 years old and didn't know very much about Armenia. Please tell us a little bit about your experience with Armenia and in Armenia. Um, well, I went in 1998 to train U.S. Peace Corps volunteers, and then I spent four summers there training more volunteers, and I grew to love the country, first with my eyes and ears and my mind and then my heart, traveling to Vanadzor and Gumri and Yerignadzor and Goris, seeing the countryside, seeing the villages, eating horovats and lavash, loving the people, singing, dancing, eating more lavash, and I recommend it to anyone. It's a wonderful country. The festival also features master classes and demonstrations of Armenian script, stone carving, carpet weaving, food and wine, Armenian dance workshop, and folk music. Another Armenian display at the festival is the Smithsonian in Armenia tent, which showcases the work done through the My Armenia Cultural Heritage Tourism Program that is funded by USAID and implemented by the Smithsonian Institution to promote sustainable rural development while preserving the country's rich cultural heritage. 
We're here with Vladimir Grigodan from DA Tours, who has traveled from Armenia to participate in the festival and to participate in the travel program with My Armenia. Vladimir, please tell us a little bit. Well, originally, before the Smithsonian Folk Fest uh, took place, uh, we traveled to Boston, New York, and yesterday we ended up the mission, that part of a mission, in Washington, D.C. The most important part of it was for us to be able, as a local tour operators located in Armenia, to be able to meet the those who are involved in the tour industry in the USA. Uh, those are travel agencies and local tour operators. And that was organized by My Armenia, Smithsonian, and sponsored by USAID, Agency of International Development. And within the towns, uh, which I just mentioned about, we were hosted by AGBO. Tell us about your experience as a tour operator in Armenia and when you give tours to foreigners that come to Armenia. What is the feedback that you receive? Most of the time, like 99.9%, uh, the feedback is very, very positive. Are there any favorite regions that they tell you that they loved? I'm not in a position to mention uh, what are my own favorite regions, and of course I do have those, but uh, when we create the tour packages, we try to uh, make it in a way so the tourists are staying in capital only for the first and last day. I absolutely agree that Yerevan has a lot to show, but uh, within our tour packages, we try to show the countryside, the regions. And the uh, most important part of it that the tour packages we're creating, most of the time we take them to the local farmers' houses, including the overnights and stays. Uh, and it has two purposes. Like, first of all, the, the, uh, in, the profit goes into the regions, and above all, the travelers are having the unique experience to see what it looks like to live in a countryside, to prepare the food, why not? And of course, as usual, it goes until one o'clock, two o'clock, after the, the most difficult part is first shot. In addition to the so-called ordinary tours, we have a lot of uh, so-called special interest tours, like for example, about the carpets, about food making process, and a lot of adventure uh, tour packages. Uh, which is booming, kind of booming, like we have about eight to nine different types of uh, adventure activities. About the special uh, projects which my company was uh, involved in, I would like to underline the just recently, about 20 days ago on a CNN, it was aired Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown. I have no words strong enough to say my feelings about the loss we all got, speaking about that extraordinary person. I don't know what to say, really. But in terms of uh, propagandizing uh, Armenia as a tourist destination and as well as a uh, few other aspects which were uh, covered during that film, such as Armenian genocide issue and the Karabakh Artsakh uh, issue. So I think the crew did its best. They were really pros. In addition to the uh, Internet Bourdain Parts Unknown episode, I encourage you to watch the Boost Traveler with Jack Maxwell, Armenia Trail, uh, which has a lot of funny moments about the booze making traditions, uh, both factory and uh, homemade in Armenia. The Armenia Creating Home Program partners include the Government of the Republic of Armenia, the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnography of the National Academy of Sciences of Armenia, the My Armenia program, the U.S. Embassy in Armenia, and the Embassy of Armenia to the United States of America. We're here with Natalie Gabrelian, Director of Alternative Education for AGBU. Natalie, please tell us AGBU's involvement in this program. Well, AGB is very happy to be here and be part of the uh, Smithsonian Folklife Festival. We're a very proud sponsor of the festival, which is running through July 8th. Um, but it's part of a larger, long-standing partnership um, that we've developed with the Smithsonian My Armenia program in particular. Uh, so in addition to the sponsorship of the festival, we've been co-hosting a series of uh, travel, tourism, trade, and media uh, events. Uh, throughout the week leading up to the festival. Uh, so we were in Boston, New York, and then had the pleasure of coming down to D.C. and taking part um, in the media event as well as the uh, festival. But our um, 
best achievement is our collaboration with the Smithsonian My Armenia program in the development of a series of multimedia ebooks. Um, developed by our team in Armenia, the Armenian Virtual College. Um, and uh, the first book focuses on the region of Vyotsur, which um, is available uh, for download um, on iOS devices and Android uh, devices. And you could just visit our website, agbu.org, and uh, click on our Armenia Off the Beaten Path uh, summer campaign, and you can learn all about the uh, e-books that we do have available, as well as the eMarmenia app, which is a travel guide for children. So you can use these virtual resources resources to learn more about Armenia and uh, it's a learn before you go um, or you learn while you're there but if you're just not able to take that trip just yet um, you can use the apps to take a trip um, in your imagination. Is it available in other languages? Yes, so all the uh, e-books are available in seven languages, two dialects of Armenian, uh, English, French, Spanish, Russian, and Turkish. And the eMarmenia app for kids uh, is available in three languages, English, Portuguese, and French. Thank you, Natalie. This is a history-making event because Armenia is the first country in the Caucasus region to be featured at this renowned festival in the heart of the United States. This Armenia Creating Home program is yet another important platform that highlights to the world how Armenian communities integrate heritage into their own strategies for economic and cultural sustainability.